Imagine a future where robotic tractors roam across the land, harvesting data as well as crops to optimize yields. That first step has already been taken by a startup which is bringing to market the world's first fully electric self driving tractor. Monarch says this tablet controlled machine can plow, harvest, and mow and runs on a 10 hours, for 10 hours, on one charge. And for every diesel tractor it replaces, that's the equivalent of taking 17 gasoline powered cars off the road. Praveen Permetsa is the co founder and CEO of Monarch Tractor and he joins us now. Praveen, fantastic to have you on the show. I think what's clear, whether you're looking at it or you're under understanding just what the capabilities are. It's no ordinary tractor. Talk to us about the combination of new technology, but also the data collection, which is super exciting as well. Yeah, thanks for having me, Julia. Yeah, our tractor is all electric, it's automated and it's smart. And if you look at tractors for the last 100 years, they've all been mechanical tools. The fact that we can not only do it in a sustainable manner with our all electric technology, but also help automate it, which means increased safety for farmers, which means uh, increased savings for farmers. And then while we are doing this automation on the farm, Julia, we are also collecting data from our, from our cameras, which allows the farmer to see what's happening in the farm, but also for consumers like you and me, that provides us a, a digital connection to our food through the cameras on the tractor. So we are quite excited about the combination of these technologies into a into a next generation tractor. So you're hoping to have that sort of farm to food analysis and perhaps allow people to track exactly what farm their food came from in the end if you're collecting all this data and of course, hopefully improving crop yields too along the way. Exactly, and if the farmer can monetize this story, that's gonna be a game changer on the farm economic side of things uh, for them. If they can directly tell their story to the consumer and if we can see what's happening we will value that food experience a lot more. And also, hopefully, that will put us in touch with our farmers, who are the most important people on the planet, with respect to our food ecosystem. And I think that connection is going to drive sustainability in agriculture and in farming. I know you've been testing this in farms across the United States, but also in India, too. Um, I can't help but think if I were a farmer, I'd be a little bit nervous to have that thing roaming around using sort of autonomous technology, whether it's with livestock around or, or people, perhaps people out in the fields. How are you sort of getting around that nervousness? Because I'm sure it's there, at least initially. Yeah, that's a great question, Julia, and something that a lot of us common people have. But when we talk to farmers who are actually sitting on the tractor, sometimes day and night when they do their operations, it's a very dull, dirty, and very often dangerous job, especially when you're spraying chemicals and things like that onto the food ecosystem. So what is a dull, dirty, dangerous job? You know, the fact that they can get off the tractor is actually much more safer for the farm communities than them being on the tractor. And also keep in mind, we have some great technology now. All of us are now familiar with autonomous car technologies. But think about a slow-moving tractor on a farm doing these kind of operations very deliberately on each and every tree. That is a much safer uh, uh, option for the farmers. So we have actually not seen a lot of resistance from the farmers. And also the tractor drivers are increasingly becoming more and more harder to find. It's a very skilled operator job. And like I said, it's a very dull job. So there's not too many takers for this. So farmers are under a lot of pressure to find these tractor drivers. It's fascinating. The labor concerns is a, a point actually I hadn't thought about. The battery yeah. charge lasts for 10 hours. I'm assuming that the farms have a, a charging point in house and then it has to be charged for what, four to five hours? I guess you do that overnight if you yeah. can. Yeah, exactly. That brings up a great question, Julia, is how is our tractor charged? And electric infrastructure on our farms is something that we all need to invest into more. Right. But as of today, what we have done with our tractor is we tell our farmers, if you have a barn and if you run a welder or some mechanical uh, you know, implement there, you can just plug our charger into a tractor into that and charge our tractor in four to five hours. So we have designed our tractor to work with the existing infrastructure. But going into the future, it's something that we should put a lot more electric infrastructure onto farms as much as we think about electric infrastructure for on-road vehicles for our electric cars and trucks. 
Yeah, because I can see that being a problem, at least initially, until we see greater investment. Um, in terms of starting price, $58,000, I believe, and they're going to be on the market later next year. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, there are other players in this space. They're behind you, but they're coming on board. Bear Flag Robotics, um, Agronitinelli yeah. in, in Denmark, John Deere is another one that's working on this. What differentiates you other than being first? Yeah, our big uh, differentiator is the mindset. We see ourselves as a bridge between technology and sustainability. So our tractors and our, techno uh, and our technology will always be focused on sustainability and farm economics, Julia. So, for example, that is the reason why our tractor is not only all electric, but it still has a steering wheel and pedal. So what that allows the, the farmers to do is it allows them to use that technology today with their existing implements and their existing workforce. Uh -huh. And not only that, the other big differentiator, Julia, is the fact that our tractor is what we call a utility class tractor. It's a 40 to 70 horsepower class tractor, which is found all over the world. It's the most common tractor sold today, and it's the fastest growing tractor segment in the world. So we are going into a, a class of tractors that is gonna have the maximum impact but more than that, it's a global product. So that's what differentiates us. This is not a product just for California farmers or the U.S. and European farmers. This is a tractor that any farmer around the world can see and can see the tractor on his farm providing value for him.